What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here, NJ.com, with the latest episode of the No Huddle Show. We're here at Novacare Complex. I'm here with Mike Kay. He made the trip from Jacksonville. He's in the mix in Philadelphia. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to break it down a little more into categories today. But before we get into that, uh, previewing the Colts game on Sunday, but before we get into that, uh, there's some kind of fairly important news that came out today with the injury report that was just released. If you thought the Eagles were in trouble at wide receiver, you, you don't even know what's coming. Uh, so at, as expected, Jay Ajayi and Darren Sproles aren't going to be playing on Sunday. Jay Ajayi hurt his back last week. He came back in the second half, but he was still hurt afterwards. Darren Sproles hurt his hamstring in practice last week, and it kind of seemed like they weren't going to play this Sunday. They didn't practice all week. So the assumption was that Corey Clement was going to be taken over, and as we found out today, apparently he hurt his quads either in practice today or yesterday or something because he's questionable. And that leaves the Eagles with Wendell Smallwood, who fans aren't very fond of, and uh, Josh Adams, who was just called up to the practice squad this week. You know, I, I think it's interesting because you and I were talking on the way to the to the complex today about how great of an opportunity this was for Corey Clement, right? And I think he is a guy that, given the opportunity, can really, really excel. I think there's a lot of Karel Buckhalter to him in a way nice that callback. He's, he's got this two-way game, and when they've given him an opportunity to shine, he shine. He's just not giving I thought him he looked really good last week, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's looked very good. Uh, my one concern is pass protection with him, but my concern with all three of the Running bottom backs, of the depth yeah. chart running backs is pass protection. We'll get into that a little bit later. But for me, when I'm looking at Corey Clement potentially not playing, what do you, where do you go from here? Man. I mean, like really, like if he could not, if he, I, you know, I, I would seriously be surprised if he doesn't play. But if he can't play, you know, you're starting Wendell Smallwood. You brought up Josh Adams. Um, those guys could do well in you know committee roles. But you're going to have to bring in another running back on top I of mean, that. I mean, Smallwood's kind of proven time and time again that he just isn't capable of taking on that workload. Right. He started a few games last year. Right, and he he's a guy – right, you, he started a few games early last year. That was year. before they knew what they had at Clement, which is kind of fun, ironic that Clement's going right. to – deserves the opportunity might not be able to take it. Well, and you pointed this out on Twitter that Clement kind of really, you know – allowed himself to be part of the offense when he broke out in week three. I think that's around when Sproles went down, so it makes sense, yeah. Right, so I, I think you're missing your top running back in Ajayi, you're missing your top multi-purpose threat in Darren Sproles, and you're missing your best red zone threat slash high upside guy in Clement. If that's the case, is Carson Wentz going to throw 50 times in his in his <laughs> return to the, the, the lineup? Man, that's I mean, not, that's not what you want in his first game It's not back. ideal. And, and, you know, I think... I mean, know, also, not to cut you off, but Jason Peters is also questionable. Right. So it's, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so he's not going into the Alshon best situation. Jeff- Alshon, Alshon Jeffrey is Upgraded from out to questionable, yes, but still, which is notable. Uh, the number one receiver is probably not playing. Like, so, like, you're hoping the defense <laughs> scores God. a couple of touchdowns if, it's, like, the it, worst case scenario happens. It's funny because, like, 30 minutes before we saw the Eagles injury report, the Colts one came out, and I, like, wrote this whole thing about they might be more banged up than the Eagles. They don't have Jack Doyle. They don't have Anthony Costanza. They don't have Marlon Mack. They, they don't even have as many, like, the offensive players are missing more. Now, the Eagles, the I Eagles, mean, you and I might have to help out at tight end this week. Like, I don't know. The, the Eagles training staff said, hold my beer. And <laughs> They basically were like, you know what? I don't know. So, so they only have two running backs in, in theory. If, if Healthy they, running backs. If, if, yeah, they only have two. So, like, is it too soon to sign somebody? I mean, there are a couple guys that are out there who know. I mean, Ken John, Kenyon Barner is the most obvious right. one, which they kind of brought in in a similar situation last year Correct. in a pinch. They kind of like the same thing with Jordan Matthews. In theory, they could bring back Mac Jones. <laughs> I don't think they want to bring yeah. him back after that. Three. And then Donald Pumphrey's on a practice squad in Detroit. Like, nothing that inspires confidence, but, I mean, Barner, like, it kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah, he just got released if, by if, the if Patriots. If they think Clement's not going to play, even if he is, does play and he's banged up. like Well, and, you know, Clement, ha- they always make a big deal of Clement playing special teams and you don't want to tax him but if Barner he's got can, a, Barner can return if he has to right so Barner would be a seemingly logical he's kind of better than Wendell Smallwood yeah well and that's true I mean you know but they like Smallwood that's why right. he's here and but, so yeah. so Barner um you know again when given the opportunity has played relatively well I think that would make sense I think that's a really good solution he knows the offense he's been it in it for two years he, he's played at a high level as a returner but when you look at this team and how banged up they are, you want to say, hey, rely on Carson. He'll give it a shot in the arm. We've said that for the last several days. But he also has slim pickings at wide receiver. Yeah, it's not like he has many places to go. And 
and then if if Jason Peters has to miss this game, you got Big V there. You know, there were times where Nick Foles wasn't able to get somebody to pick up the blitz or, or spot out the blitz and did not have the pass protection he needed at running back. I'm concerned about Wendell Smallwood and Josh Adams playing their real first major snaps of the season and then having to protect a guy who's coming off an ACL surgery and an LCL surgery in his first game. And he probably won't be able to prolong the play like he did when he was healthy yeah. before December. And, and the biggest thing for him already was Doug kind of alluded to this sort of today. Uh, he doesn't want him to go out there and force for like, not necessarily like force the issue, but like he doesn't want him to, overdo it right away and he might feel even more pressure to do that when you don't have number one anyone to throw to and yeah. I mean you don't want him to force himself to run the ball when he doesn't need to well and and Doug didn't say this but I got the vibe that like he doesn't want Carson to make mental errors either so it's not just physical you know yeah. I mean I think with a guy like that if you're gonna press and you need to be able to tell him to like reel it back. You know, he's also working with Mike Grow for the first time in a game situation yeah. as offensive that's coordinator. Actually, no, that's actually an interesting storyline that people that's not really being talked about. The other guy he's used to is on the other sideline. Yeah, because I, you know, I mean, like the there is so much going on and there's so many moving parts. And you got Jordan Matthews back here, and I know a lot of fans were not thrilled about. That some fans weren't thrilled, some fans were thrilled. There was one media member who was pretty thrilled. Um, <laughs> you guys might know who he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, you might know him. Um, Subtweet right there. <laughs> but like Jordan Matthews is a nice short-term solution. He knows the offense. He knows the terminology. He's a band-aid, really. Yeah, yeah he's a band-aid. He's not going to be the guy that fixes it. As we said earlier, Alshon Jeffrey upgraded from from out the last two weeks to questionable. That's a good sign, but he hasn't been cleared yeah, for contact. Yeah, I mean, he's been limited. He hasn't. If you think about it, he just got cleared. He just started practicing last week. Right. First time since February. Like, he's not going to play this week. Well, and you saw how cautious they were with Carson. I mean, yeah, you you're going to take – it would make little Especially sense. Especially considering how much they clearly need Alshon. Like, if you rush him back and then he's out for a while, like – that's a bad look. Right, and I think, you know, he did some very heroic things last year playing with that injury. You don't want him to have to do that again. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it's not worth your long-term investment when you've paid him. I mean, they paid him a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, substantial money. So, Nelson Aguilar. Big I think he's the story of it. like with with before I thought Corey Clement was like the story of this oh, game. Absolutely this Aguilar, is, yeah. It's Aguilar. Like he is the key here. This is his coming out party for sure if he and Carson are on the same page. Because when you look at it last year, Jeffrey, Aguilar, and Ertz, those were the three guys that Carson consistently targeted at a high volume. Ertz uh, is playing. Yeah. That's great. But he's kind of been not necessarily a non-factor, but inconsistent, I would say, um, the first two games. And Aguilar hasn't. Aguilar obviously doesn't have the yardage because Nick Foles was throwing like five feet in front of him. But uh, I, I think... But he has a lot of catches, yeah. Right. But I think, too, you look at a guy like Sheldon Gibson, who's known as being a deep threat. Carson's returning to the, the lineup. He's obviously a better deep thrower than Foles. Yeah. Right. So I think while there is a lot to be concerned about, there are some really big opportunities here. Yeah. All right. I think that was a good kind of summary of everything we've talked about. I, I, we, we went a little without structure the last couple episodes. We got a lot of good suggestions from some listeners, which has been really helpful to us because we're just getting into this now. Don't Feel feel free to always email us, tweet at us, you know, re- leave a review. Tell, cr- we, we take criticism well, me and, me and Mike, I think. Call us funny names. <laughs> Call us names, whatever. But Even if you do like the show. But, you know, send us questions. We'll answer them on the air. Leave us a five-star review. Subscribe. Uh, I'm, I'm not ending the podcast right now. I just wanted to point all that out. Uh, we're we're going to get in some categories right now, and we're going to try and make this a consistent thing in our preview episode, which just pretty much is. Uh, th- our first category I, I decided to call plot twist, uh, You know, something that might happen that maybe people aren't expecting to happen on Sunday, uh, like something out of the M. Night Shyamalan movie, because he's, he's from Philly, you know, kind of. Yeah, you know. That then, corny reference kind of works because of that, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> off air, you and I are going to talk about uh, Unbreakable, because there's a reference oh, man, in, to football in the beginning of Unbreakable that doesn't make any sense. Oh, I didn't even Yeah, it's, it's about, like, this kid at Temple who can run, like, really, really fast uh, yeah, and he's yeah. big, and it's like... <laughs> And he went to Temple in like <laughs> yeah, the yeah. early 2000s. <laughs> Sorry, that was a sidetrack. But um, so, what, what's your what's your plot twist? My plot twist is that. Hmm. 
Can we get like some? <laughs> um, for me, the plot twist is that Wendell Smallwood is going to make a couple of really big plays in this game. I think when you they're not going to want to push Corey too much, even if he can play. I think Smallwood could come up big. He's he's done that every now and then in his career. He's flashed a little bit, and I think this is the game that he comes up big. I where, would where, t- they, where he kind of proves that why they keep sticking with him. Right. Like I'm not saying he's going to run for 100 yards and a touchdown. I think he could have a really meaningful six carries for 35 yards, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's fair. I th- I just personally think he's just a bad running back, but I guess the Eagles trust him because he plays on special teams and he knows the offense, which – when they only have two running backs and one of them is an undrafted rookie, that's probably going to be valuable this week. Uh, I I think my plot twist, I'm going to go with, uh, I think Jalen Mills is going to have a good game. Maybe oh. that goes. Maybe that's controversial because it seems like fans kind of hate him more than anybody. He's been kind of a lightning rod for criticism, and I get it because when he gives up a play, like, it's bad. Like, he gives up, he, either he, he messes up on a double move or it's a long touchdown. Like, we saw that on the first play of the game last week. Uh, but I, I think he's more talented than people give him credit for. I, he makes some mistakes. He is young. He was just picked it out of the seventh round two years ago. Uh, I, I just I don't know if he's necessarily going to be put on Tiger by Hilton. He probably shouldn't be. But I, I <laughs> but I, I think he's going to have a good game this week. And I think the dichotomy for him too is he is a really physical corner, and I think Jeff Schwartz likes him a lot. Jim, Jim Schwartz. Schwartz, sorry. Oh my God, Jeff Schwartz. I have a friend also named Jeff Schwartz, but I was thinking about the offensive <laughs> lineman for a second. Sorry, um, Jim Schwartz likes corners that can tackle and who are physical and he is a physical corner he does know how to tackle he has a very good ability to wrap up I think this is a game where you see that to your point I I think this is a big tackle game for him if that makes sense so maybe it's a Darby versus TY but you know Ryan Grant can run pretty impressive crossing routes and if Mills is able to even if he does give up a catcher or or four which he's prone to ha- is prone to happen. As long as it's not a long one, yeah. right? You know, um, that's the key. That's the key for the secondary in general. The big plays, right? You, you've got to limit limit the big plays, it's like like they did with Julio Jones. They they kind of allowed him to get catches within like that twenty yard radius, right? And not no more than that. So he had like eleven catches for one hundred fifty five yards, but he didn't score and he didn't get any deep balls. Yeah, there's a reason why Mills plays off so yeah, much. That's you, why Schwartz likes doing that. I think you know, yeah. and and he's coached like that since he was at Tennessee as a defensive coordinator. So I think I think Mills talent level is kind of in like the middle of how Schwartz views it and how the fans view it, but like. You know, he's a guy who I think long term could convert to free safety or to the nickel corner spot. It'll be interesting to see how the season goes along because I don't know how many games you can get by with him giving up big touchdowns. Yeah, I, th- I think this is kind of going to. I don't know if the Eagles would necessarily do this, but this is going to be like the tipping off point for him. If he has another bad game and T.Y. Hilton uh, burns him, you're going to hear a lot more noise about how Sidney Jones would be on the outside and how they should move him on, which maybe they should anyway. Yeah, but, I'm a big believer in that. But I, I, maybe this is what pushes Jim Schwartz to make that move. Well, and I think Sidney has shown that he can play well and up to somewhat to the level that he was at, at Washington. Um, he's played really well in the slot. He hasn't given up any big plays. A lot of times if you don't notice a cornerback, that's the best possible thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I, I'm also a big uh, – a big fan of Rasul Douglas since when he was at West Virginia. Yeah, I, thought, I thought it was weird that he, he only got like two plays last week. Well, but. and all he does is make play. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, he, think came, about in he, he came Atlanta. in for Darby and he got an interception. Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy that has a nose for the football. And I think intriguing size. He's a very intriguing player for well, sure. Yeah. And I think when you have the offense dealing with so many injuries, you have to rely on your defense to make a lot of plays. And for me, Rasul Douglas coming in and making some big plays, he's a physical corner. He's a big corner. It gives you opportunities. And the Colts are going to throw a lot. I mean, they don't, like I mentioned, they don't have Marlon Mack. Well, they don't have Jack Doyle either, but they don't have their left tackle. So I, they're, they don't have much of a running game anyway. They haven't for a few years. Andrew Luck is going to be thrown in a lot, so there's yeah. going to be many opportunities. So, especially with how much Jim Schwartz liked to rotate his guys anyway to keep him fresh, mm-hmm. it would make sense if Douglas got at least a few more snaps this week. Yeah, and you know their best receiver outside of T.Y. Hilton is tight end Eric Ebron, who's he's been had, a, he had two touchdowns. Yeah, he's been a menace in the red zone. That's going to be a big opportunity for Nigel Bradham. That's going to be a big opportunity for Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Ebron's thing has always been that he's kind of been an underachiever. 
Uh, I'm interested Detroit, to see. He was a first round pick, I think, wasn't he? He was, yeah. yeah. Um, top ten actually, and wow, I think the crazy. I think Reich can do things for him to make him similar to Ertz in a way. Not necessarily a physical tight end, but he's a guy who can get open. He's got good size. He's got good athletic ability. It's going to be interesting to see how that happens. I'm also interested to see how much Ertz's uh, level of performance raises up with Carson back in the lineup. Yeah, that's good. All right. So I think plot test, that that was a successful category, I think. Let's go on to the next one. I'm calling match game, where we go through a couple matchups for the upcoming game, how we think they're going to play out, You know, what are kind of our thoughts. First one, I'll start with a little more fun one. Fun in the sense that Brandon Graham's already kind of started talking trash, uh, kind yeah. of casually. So there's an offensive lineman on the Colts named Joe Hay. Is that yeah, how he, was, he, he was Carson, was Carson Wentz's, right. was he le- his left tackle? He, yes, he was left tackle he for plays, his, his last two he plays years, right tackle right. Yeah. for the Colts. So he's going to be blocking Brandon Graham. So, someone asked him, like, someone asked Brandon Graham the other day, so has, have you gotten any tips from Carson Wentz about it? He's like, no, but from what I've seen, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> I, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting strategy to do that. Give him some bulletin board material. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think the offensive line is a unique position for bulletin board material because really, you ha- you know, I mean, you're on an island sometimes. Like, yes, you're working as a group, but if Brandon Graham's going up against you, I do think Graham will have a good – I think it's a really good matchup to yeah, talk about. Yeah, and I think it's an important one too because if they get – they need to get pressure on Luck today. I mean, Sunday, sorry. Sunday, yeah. Um, it's okay. I got ahead of myself with the previous segment. <laughs> I don't know what day this. it is anymore, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Knows? I, I've been driving for so long. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I think when when you look at that matchup, it's special because you can rotate guys too. So even if, if Haig is able to hold his own against Graham, you can find a bad matchup for him uh, elsewhere. I think Chris Long could eat eat him alive. I actually think Chris Long's going to have a better game than Brandon Graham. Interesting. If that makes sense. Um, and Michael Bennett is, will be one to watch too, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree completely. So, I mean, I think Chris Long, no matter where he lines up, is going to yeah, do yeah, well yeah. in this game. I mean, you're without, you, you've got the back of left tackle and you got the uh, right tackle as well. For me, the matchup to watch is Darby versus T.Y. Hilton. I just think T.Y. is the dynamic playmaker for the Colts and Luck is loves targeting him for a reason downfield. I think Darby has sometimes struggled with speed, and I think this is a really good matchup for him. I'm a big believer that uh, that Darby is going to have a career year this year before he hits free agency. I think he's got Pro Bowl potential. This is an opportunity for him. He, he I, Covering the Jaguars for several years, I was able to watch T.Y. Hilton. If you can be physical with him, you can take him out of a game. Uh, Jalen Ramsey did a really good job of that. Jalen Ramsey struggled with speed his first season in the league, still was able to shut down T.Y. Hilton. So if if Darby's pressing him, if Darby's roughing him up a little bit in coverage, you can slow T.Y. Hilton down. Yeah, and another one, another matchup I would say, it's not necessarily a matchup, but I think it's the storyline of this game is Andrew Luck versus Carson Wentz. Oh, yeah. Who has the better game? Uh, you know, Andrew Luck, his first couple of games back, he missed all of last season. What What, what was his injury? Uh, he had a shoulder. Shoulder. And Carson Wentz, of course, is his first game back, and both both defenses are going to be attacking them. And I'm I'm I don't know. I, I'll get in more into Wentz as we go on, but I, I think Luck might have the upper hand at least on just this first game because we don't know what we're going to get out of Wentz right now. Well, I, I yeah, I think Wentz is the more naturally talented player, which yes. is kind of crazy yeah, to say I mean, when you consider, which is, which is still like not to slight Andrew right. Luck. Right. Well, and it's yeah. crazy because when Luck came out of college, he, oh, he was, was like the, the guy. Pro, he was the pro prototypical quarterback Stanford guy of course. um I think the Eagles have a better offensive line big V there or not uh, or I should say Jason Peters there or not um <laughs> I think they have the better tight ends the better uh wide receiver even the better wide receiver talent outside of TY like if you take TY out of there they it's, it's not good so my second matchup that I would talk about that I think is really interesting is um the Colts linebacker group against Zach Ertz. I think Zach Ertz is in an opera. It, they, they're starting two rookies uh, in nickel coverage and our old friend, Najee good at Sam linebacker. I think Zach Ertz is going to have a day. Like this is, this is the day to this un- is the Zach Ertz game. Yeah. This is the day to unleash him. This is like one of those. What, what are we talking? Like 12 catches, a hundred yards, a touchdown, tw- 12 catches, 132 yards. Damn. And a touchdown. Wow. All right. Fantasy owners yeah, should hey. be excited this week. Get them. <laughs> Get them. All right. All right. That will end the match game right there. Uh, for this next category, I want. I just wanted to call it simple. Let's argue. 
I'm gonna okay. throw. I'm gonna throw. We're gonna take, take turns each week. One of us will throw out a hot take. The other person has to take the opposite side, even if they don't necessarily agree okay. with it. Oh, I like this. I'm gonna throw one out. People have accused me of being too negative, and this is probably again being too negative. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm I'm gonna throw my hot take just based on all the publicity and all the quotes. I think Carson Wentz doesn't have a good game this week. I think people are getting a little too overexcited about. I, I know how great he is. I know he's looked in practice. He just he hasn't taken a hit since December. Um, I, I don't think this is necessarily reflective of how the season's going to go. But I say he comes out. He's a little rusty. Maybe he throws a touchdown. But I don't think he's going to have an amazing game. I, th- I still think the Eagles win actually. But I I don't think Carson Wentz is going to have the game everybody's expecting because everybody's talking like he's going to throw 400 yards and three touchdowns this week. He's the type of guy that I feel like every time you expect him to underdeliver, he overdelivers. If that makes sense, yeah. Um, I could definitely see him uh, going, getting off to a slow start. Don't get me wrong. I could see it being somewhat like the Cowboys game last year, where they were like really struggling. What, weeks at the week seventeen one. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the, pre, no the, the, the actual Cowboys <laughs> that wasn't game. A game. I'm, I'm <laughs> quote finger, where the Six game zero. was close, uh, going into halftime, very tight low scoring, and then Carson – I snapped my fingers if you couldn't hear me. Carson, <laughs> can't see it, but he yeah, snapped his fingers. Car- he doesn't Carson, know how this thing works, the audio medium. Carson, the offense, <laughs> just kind of worked out. And it, it just – like I I think he's going to need a half to kind of settle in. So if you're, if, if you're seeing him struggle early on, that's predictable. I think how he responds to that in the second half says a lot about – where his mind is, where where everything is, how not to be big because once his adrenaline wears off and he's taking all those hits, like how his knee feels, also. Yeah, and I think every time there's somebody around his feet or anybody gets close to hitting him, everybody's going to hold their breath. He needs to get hit. I would actually like to see him get sacked twice in the first half because you want to see how he responds. Just put in Big V. Well, and the thing <laughs> is too is sometimes you have the adrenaline out there where you can do things. I mean, look at his last touchdown pass of of the season. He literally threw on a on a torn ACL and LCL. Oh, I mean, he's he's insane. Like I mean, <laughs> he's he's something else. That yeah. Guy. No, he's special. And I mean, I'll happily be wrong about this, but I I just I think people are getting a little too ahead of themselves with him. And that's fine cuz he's Carson Wentz, he's the franchise. Nick Foles looks sloppy, but they're still going to win. I th- oh, we'll get into that in a minute. They're still going to win, I think, but Calm down is all I'm saying. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. People don't like it when you tell them to calm down. <laughs> yeah, man. Stop trying to control their oh, feelings. <laughs> all right. All right. One more. Uh, two more categories. This last one. It's not the last one. I don't know how numbers work. Our prediction of the week. We'll, we'll look at something. We'll each make a prediction. And I thought we'll stick with Carson Wentz here. Who do you think his first pass goes to? And who do you think his first touchdown goes to? His fat, first pass will go to completion, Nelson. Completion, I should completion say. Completion yeah. will go to Nelson Aguilar. His First touchdown will go to Zach Ertz. I'm going to say first completion to Zach Ertz. First touchdown, Elliot, hold yourself, Jordan Matthews. Oh, my God. Could you imagine that? <laughs> Half Elliot the might celebrate. will implode. <laughs> I, I, what are we going to do I, about I, that I press think he's, box? He's going to play a bigger role than I think people maybe understand or want him to. He has to. He's, he's de facto number three receiver at least, maybe even number two, depending on – their thoughts on Kamar Aiken. Carson Wentz has never played with Kamar Aiken. He's played with Jordan Matthews. Well, I mean, he got to throw to him a little bit. In yeah, the yeah, I camp, know. But... I'm just saying, I it just makes Jordan Matthews is going to be playing the slot, and mm-hmm. as we saw last year with how often Nelson was Nelson Aguilar's target, he, Wentz likes throwing it to the slot. Well, yeah, even looks, if Ma- yeah. Matthew doesn't catch a touchdown, which my prediction was he will, he I think he's going to get. I think he could get five, six, seven catches. Yeah, I think a good game for I him. Mean, he also might drop a couple. But, yeah, know. well, part <laughs> and, of the and course. Eagles fans will love that. I think I think a good game for him would be something like five catches for fifty. Kind of like what uh, Aiken had last week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Aiken is a guy that has gotten a lot of criticism just because of his past and obviously the preseason. But I think Aiken, given a, a quarterback the talent level of Wentz, could play well. I mean, when Joe Flacco was on, he was doing pretty well in Baltimore. Yeah. Before we do our final petition, just we haven't talked about Dallas Goddard at all. I'm just curious, how, do you think he plays a bigger role this week? Because I, I kind of feel like he has to at this point. So, so Doug Marone said today, uh, Friday, we're recording this Friday, that they have Doug three. Doug Marone or Peterson? Th- Doug Pete. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I was like, wait, are you, did Doug Marone talk about sorry, Dallas Goddard? So, for some yeah. so stop yeah, confusing sorry, your Doug. Sorry guys, I know I'm going to get emails about this. <laughs> we'll, we'll train myself by the post game show to next, learn what the name Sunday. of the Eagles coach is. Yeah, well, it's tough to go from one Doug to the other. Uh, <laughs> Teach me how to Dougie Peterson, I guess. Oh, but um, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> so Doug Peterson today said uh, that they have three talented tight ends. Well, I've yet to see one of them. 
uh, you know, in, in Dallas Goddard. And I think I think it's interesting. Like, they praised these guys all off season. That's why it, it, people forget that you probably need to, like, not listen to the praise from the off season. Well, Sheldon Gibson <laughs> like, was getting praised. Yeah, Bob Bosby was the number one slot corner. Right. You, I mean, you had Sheldon Gibson getting all this praise. He was yeah, targeted he's, he's twice been that, in two games. Yeah, I mean, if you had told me he didn't play the last two weeks, I would have believed you. Right. So, you know... Look, I think Goddard needs to be involved in the red zone. He has to. Yes, he didn't come down in bounds with that touchdown catch against That's Atlanta. That's like a first game call guy coming out of college. Right, thing. but still, it, it showed one. his yeah. ability yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to catch a pass that wasn't necessarily easy. And I think I Josh Perkins showed me a lot um, in Tampa, but the ceiling for Goddard is just really, really high. And you traded up in the second round to get him. He was your top pick. Use him. Yeah, I mean, I've been. I was. I was pretty shocked. I mean, last week the explanation for why they used Perkins it seems like was his uh, experience as a receiver. They put him in the slot. Maybe they just didn't trust Goddard yet. They and they thought it would have changed the scheme too much. They've been talking a lot about going twelve personnel, which involves two tight ends, which they really haven't done much, which has been pretty surprising. But with the, with the way their receiving core looks, and especially if maybe Jordan Matthews isn't ready like we think he might be, then they, they have to go to Dallas Goddard more. They just they have they, to. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, now. Last last part. All right, give us your give us your prediction. Who wins? Score? Why? I've got it twenty four to twenty seven Eagles. Obviously, I made that prediction this morning before we knew about Corey Clement and everything like that. But I still think that this Eagles team is going to find a way to win. I think there'll be a defensive touchdown, and I think Zach Ertz is going to have a big game, like I said before. Yeah, I, I have it as uh, Eagles winning twenty one to seventeen. Uh, like I, in, in part because I I. Th- this was also, again, this was before we knew about Clement and Jay Ajayi being out. Uh, I think Carson Wentz is going to be a little rusty, but even if at his, even if he's not at his best, the Colts are not good. Uh, I don't think their defense is very good, even though they, ha- they have a little more talent than I think people realize. They have that rookie, Darius Leonard, who had 18 tackles last week, which is insane for a rookie in the second mm-hmm. week. Uh, Eagles actually worked him out uh, in the pr- during the draft process from South Carolina State. But the Colts aren't good. Andrew Luck will keep them in any game. If T.Y. Hilton can get, can get a big play, then this game will get very interesting. But I, I see the Eagles winning in a closer one than maybe fans are anticipating. Well, and I think people saw the Tampa game and saw Nick Foles struggle and saw the offense struggle and see all these injuries. Howie Roseman's put together an incredibly deep roster, and I still think they're better than any team in the division without Jeffrey, without I, Clement, I still think they're going to win this division running away. Right, I agree. I mean, I, The Redskins, I, I kind of saw the Redskins as a sleeper. And then they just got worked last week against the Colts. They only had like six points on the Colts. Well, and all this team needs to do is win three of when, – when they're looking – a lot of coaches look at the season as four quarters. Yeah. They need to go three and one, at worst two and two yeah, cause then in it starts each getting quarter. Pretty, it gets, starts getting pretty difficult after this right. quarter too. Yeah, they get the so, Titans next week, and then it's the is it the Vikings after? No, I always forget who's next. Is it the Vikings? Yeah, it's the Vikings. Yeah, Vikings and Jaguars are coming up. Yeah, so that'll be oh, and the Giants Thursday night football game, yeah. and they look. I NFC mean, East is always tough. You know, although the Giants look bad. <laughs> I mean, you look at the NFC East. The Giants look awful. The Cowboys look awful. The Redskins are disappointing. L- disappointing. Yeah. If the Eagles can win this game and win this game by a touchdown or like a touchdown or more, they will really set the tone for this yeah. race. I mean, they can forward. win this division with 10 wins, though they, of course, want to have a home field advantage in the playoffs, mm-hmm. as you saw in the play. I mean, It's who- pretty understandable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, who knows if the playoffs go the same way last year if they're not get, getting that home field advantage, like especially that Falcons game. Yeah, the Falcons game to me, to me, like it, it sounds weird, and I've, I've said this even to my wife, it felt like the, not the real Super Bowl, but like, the reason why they were able to win that Super was Bowl that was game. that Atlanta game. That was like the true the test. jumping off point, yeah. Well, and it, it, it gave them confidence to go in the Vikings I game. Had got and... Nick Foles going, yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right, we'll stop dwelling on the Super Bowl because Doug Peterson doesn't like it when everybody does that. So. Yeah, it's over with. <laughs> They've moved so, on. <laughs> so that's a good spot to end this thing on. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we're going to get back into a groove now. We're going to be doing a couple of these every every week. Uh, Mike's in the mix. We'll have another post-game pod. Send us questions. Leave us a rev- five-star review. We like five-star reviews the most. Uh, ask a question in the review. We'll answer it on the podcast. Uh, we're on all the podcasting apps, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Spreaker, the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, Spotify, SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. Ask us a question, you know, and, and engage with us. We, we, we want to talk to you guys. Let's get engaged. Let's get engaged. <laughs> we'll end on that. Let's
Smear tagline. <laughs> Thanks for listening.